Hey everyone, welcome to the 27th episode of the Shit Podcast. Today we have a very special guest. She is a skateboarder and she also is a snowboarder. Let's meet Maddie Bolt, a skateboarder from Canada. What's up guys? Uh, my name is Maddie Bolt. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm a skateboarder and you're watching the Shit Podcast. Welcome. What's yeah. up? How is he going for you? Oh, dude, I'm good. How are you, man? Very well. So, are you going to skate today? Uh, no, actually. I skated pretty hard the past two days, and unfortunately today I have to work. So, I'm getting some uh, some massage done on my body because it's hurting, so that'll be good. <laughs> okay, but how often do you skate? I try to skate five days a week. Usually I give myself weekends to just like chill. Um, I'm super lucky. A lot of places in Ontario, because I'm, I'm from Toronto, a lot of places here are shut down because of COVID. Um, but I still have access to one of the parks, so I can go skate there. And uh, yeah, we pretty go. We go like five hours, five days a week. Okay. And what about the streets? Are you able to skate in the streets? Uh, well, in Canada, you really can't skate it. Well, at least in Toronto, like you can't skate outside for like five months of the year. Oh. So, yeah, we're like forced to go inside. It kind of sucks, but like. I don't know, but I love to hit the streets when I'm not, uh, when it's, you know, warm outside and not like negative 15 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I know what you say. So when did you start to skate? How many years ago? Um, so I started when I was like eight or nine years old and I skated for a couple years, but I kind of like fell out of it. The people that I was hanging around, like we didn't really skate together anymore and I didn't really friends that did it so I got caught up in like some other sports I started racing mountain biking mountain bikes for a while um, stuff like that but then I picked it back up when I was 18 so it's been almost five years like four and a half years since I've been like really skating and like taking it seriously okay and how many years did you stop uh, I was eight yeah eight years I like didn't skate at all it was kind of I if I had one regret it's that for sure like I wish <laughs> that I never stopped skating and like never lost the passion for it but as soon as i picked up a board again i was like oh true like this is the best <laughs> yeah and maybe you were more more hungry with a better mindset for skating when you take the board again yeah for sure i also think like a big factor that uh, like when i came back into skating the the industry for women had changed so much like when i was you know 10 or 11 years old, there were like two girls that I knew of and it was Lacey, or sorry, Leo Baker and uh, Vanessa Torres. And so like, I would watch them and I was like, oh, this is so sick. Or like Marissa Dalsano. And like, that was it though. Like I didn't know of any other girls, but when I got back into skating, the first day that I picked up my board, I actually went to a woman's meetup in Toronto and I met like a bunch of girls there. And I think that just like got me so hyped on skating. I was like, yo, like, there's a whole bunch of women that do this. Like, and I had no idea. Like before that I had met two other girl skaters like from Toronto area and that was it. Yeah, that's true. The skating is growing so much and the female skate community all, uh, as well. So what was your motivation to start in the skateboarding maybe uh, five years ago? Uh, yeah, so like, I mean, originally when I was like eight, I just saw some kids doing it on the street and I was like, yo, that's pretty sick. I want to try. And then I loved it. Um, but when I got back into it, it just was kind of like I somebody hit me up about this woman's meetup and I was like, oh, that seems really cool. And I, uh, I you know, practiced a little bit before the meetup because I didn't want to be like fully rusty. And like so I like got my kickflips back and stuff, which was fun. Um, and then I went and I just like met so many super awesome people and I had so much fun skating and like met some of my best friends who are like still my best friends to this day. So I think it was a big, like that was a big motivation. Like just, I had so much fun and like met all these people that I really vibed with and like clicked with, which was super cool. Okay. So 
you can say that the best thing about skateboarding is, uh, you know, skating with the homies or feeling the trick. What is the thing that you you say? Okay, I, I really feel joy about this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think definitely there's a few things like you know there's nothing like going out in the streets with the homies and like getting a sick clip or something like that. But I, I think that's it. Like you know when you have to work for something or like. For example, the other day I landed my first nollie flip and like for whatever reason, yeah, for whatever reason that trick has like been such a struggle for me. Like I've been trying for like really hard for a year and a half, a whole year and a half to get this trick and I finally landed one. And it's just like that feeling. It's like, oh, like I did it. Like, hell yeah, you know? Um, but yeah, I would say that like when you really have to work for something and it finally, you know, pull it off or like, you really have to mentally battle something like, oh man, like I, like, I really want to hit this big rail, but like, I'm scared. And then you like that one where you jump on it, it just feels so good to like overcome that fear. That's true. I agree with you. So talking about this, you are also a snowboarder. When did you start in snowboarding? Um, I actually started snowboarding when I was like five or six okay. and I snowboarded like straight through my whole life again because in canada like it gets really snowy and cold here as of like sometimes october all the way till like may so basically the only thing for a while i had to do was snowboard but yeah i love i love snowboarding it's a shame that all the resorts here are shut down right now because i yeah. can't both. <laughs> <laughs> i know what you mean so yeah. maybe this is going to be a difficult question but what feeling do you enjoy the most to skate or snowboarding? <laughs> oh, I hate this question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, <laughs> <laughs> like, if I had to pick one, I don't think, I mean, I think now I would pick skating. There was a lot of years where I was like, oh, I don't know, but like, I've really been like on the skating tip lately, which is fun. But um, yeah, I would say it's, it's different. Like, I mean, it's similar, but it's different. Like, you're not gonna get the same feeling of like hitting a huge 40 foot jump and like blasting a huge grab that you are like on a skateboard but it's it's the same vibe like you know you do a sick trick on your snowboard and you're like yes like did it same with skating like it's it's not accomplishing or like overcoming your fears i think that's like such a motivator especially like the adrenaline that comes with that is uh it's pretty pretty sick Okay, I like that. So what do you think? What is more, which one is more difficult to learn? What do you think at first? Skating. I think skating oh. is 10 times harder for sure. Wow. Like I think sometimes it can be hard to like grasp the concept of going down a hill on a snowboard, but like learning how to ollie or learning how to kickflip or like learning how to board slide a rail, I feel like is so much harder on a skateboard. Um, there's also a lot more tricks and like variables that come with skating that make it more difficult. Like, you know, on a, on a snowboard, like if you want to board slide a rail, you know for a fact that board is going to be under your feet because it's attached to you. But on a skateboard, like you have to make the board come with you and pop it right and like land on it right for you to like even have a chance and like actually land on your board. Like that's a whole other thing. But um, but yeah, I would say skateboarding is is harder to learn like and master for sure. Not that anybody can master skateboarding, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, of course. I know what you mean. So I wonder, I have never practiced snowboarding but I, but I have skated. Do you think that I have an advantage over the other people to learn snowboarding or, or is it just a different thing? I mean, I think a little bit. Um, there's definitely transferable skills. The, the concept of like edging and like making carves on a snowboard isn't really like anything that we do with skating. Like it is kind of with the turning, but you have to be able to learn how to like go from edge to edge so that you don't catch an edge and like eat shit. But um, yeah, I think definitely anybody that like has stood on a board before or like has longboarded or skateboarded will have somewhat of an advantage over somebody that's like never touched a board in their life, for sure. Okay, and there are the, the four stances too, or are just switch and, and regular stance? And I can do like nollie or fakie? I, I yeah, don't... like, 
you can it's not really a huge thing in snowboarding to do like nolly or fakie tricks i find i do it a lot because like for me a switch lip slide 270 out is the same as like a fakie like or sorry a half cab board so i always pop off my front foot and apparently it's it's cool in snowboarding sometimes i think i don't know i'm still learning all the the cools and not cools but um yeah there's there's like you can do nollies you can do like fakie um for sure but mainly in snowboarding it's kind of like a, a regular and switch vibe okay and um, what do you think what is the first movement or trick that we the new the beginners of snowboarding should learn at first uh how to stop for okay. sure okay like, like power slide yeah yeah actually it's totally like a power slide like if i were to explain to somebody what stopping on a snowboard is like i would say power slide um because it's basically like with a power slide you put your you know depending on what way you're going but you put your heels into it and then um that is gonna lift the front edge of your board so that you can just kind of like scrape the snow like that um but yeah stopping is just key because like you have to know how to like stop yourself and be in control or else like you're gonna end up in the trees and somewhere you're not you don't want to be <laughs> yeah for sure i know what you mean so what do you think what is sport um Is more easier to make a living as a skateboarder or in a, in, a, in a snowboarding? What do you think? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think maybe skating. It's a, that's a really hard question. I think both, you know, are starting to do a lot better. Um, you know, we're starting to see more women's representation in both. Like I know uh, Maria Thompson, I believe, just had a cover in snowboarding. I mean, I guess like there might be more women's reputation representation in snowboarding a little bit from what I've seen. Um, but also like it's it's getting better with skating too. Like both again, like both are start they're moving in the right direction, but there's still a lot that needs to happen. Like there needs to be more women in magazines, like more women on covers stuff like that because like growing up as a young girl and like getting girls into the industry like seeing that is amazing and like i know like myself i will literally pick up a magazine and just like blast through it to even see if there's a woman inside and i'll be like oh another one like no woman sick, <laughs> yes. Not sick. um but yeah i would say like pretty similar it's a struggle it's a struggle in both to be a woman in the industry for sure yeah. like um the opportunities there's not as many but again like things are on the come up like things are getting better so so that's a positive for sure yeah i know this is growing the support is coming i know yeah. and after the olympics this is going to grow a lot yeah i think so it's going to be an interesting uh interesting switch <laughs> yeah for sure And I wonder, what do you think about this, the um, making a comparison between the skate community and the snowboarding community? It's like the same vibes or can you notice any difference between these two? Yeah, I mean, definitely both are super good vibes. Great people. Um, it's a huge community. I love both. Again, that's why I can't really pick one. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, skating is just kind of easier because you can do it all year round and versus like snowboarding you can't like it's only a certain amount of the year but it's that time of year where everybody's like so fired up and gets really really stoked um so i'd say like sometimes the stoke can be a little bit higher in snowboarding just because like i mean with anything if you're not allowed to do it for say eight months and then it's time people are going to be like extra hype versus skating it's like you can skate all year um okay. but that's the only thing i would say like it's both are so sick and i love both communities so much okay. glad to be a part of uh of them for sure yeah for sure i really feel proud also to be part of the skate community yeah it's the best so, good people <laughs> so you were skating you had had the opportunity to skate in a street league yeah 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 that was that was crazy yeah we went to brazil it was pretty nuts <laughs> that's nice so wh when was that uh that was last september sorry the previous september so like uh 2019 okay 2019 yeah right i think or 2019. 2018 i don't know i 2019 i think 
Yeah. Okay, and how was that process? How how was everything? How was that competition for you? Yeah, it was uh it was a bit of a trip, honestly. It was a bit of an eye opener to to skate a course like that. I had never been exposed to something so large and fast. Um and like just like extra danger factor for sure. Um like they had one like tabletop kind of rail and just for fun cut out the whole one side so like if you did mess up like not only are you yeah you're just gonna eat shit like full on <laughs> there's no ifs ands or buts but um but yeah it was it was an amazing opportunity i really loved it i love that i got to skate a course like that because it really did open my eyes to like okay this is the level that like things are at and i need to to step it up a notch because like i wasn't skating as fast as i should have necessarily and like those ramps really force you to do that so okay. um but yeah it, it was really cool it was great i got to meet a lot of uh, of people too and just like be there and watch people throw down it was it was an amazing experience for sure that's nice and and your performance was good what do you think yeah actually um weirdly i skated world championships like the best that i had ever skated like i was like struggling in practice and then somehow like competition time came and i actually like pulled some pretty sweet tricks out and landed Whoa. them which was uh which was tight um but yeah it was uh it was good I, that was my best result i had so i was i was hyped for sure and what section did you enjoy the most the run section or the best trick section um i think i got bumped out before the best trick because like the way they do it all the way up until semi-finals i think is uh is just like runs or jams so i got bumped out before semis which was unfortunate but what can you do um <laughs> but yeah i do like the best trick format like i've skated it before and it's it's pretty fun because it gives you a little more like chance to to throw some hammers out you know Yes, that's true. It's more difficult to put together a perfect line and to be consistent. Yeah, exactly. Like if you can just like throw down one like sick trick, you know you're gonna have like a, a solid score on the board versus like, oh, you had a good run, but like you fell once. So immediately like your score is just way lower. Yes, that's true. So what would be your hammer, your, your trick that you say, okay, I would try this. If we are on a rail, on a handrail, What would be your trick, your choice? Um, like on a hard rail? Yeah. No, um, yeah, like the big section of a street league, maybe? Oh, like if we're talking big section of street league, probably a backboard at this point. Like <laughs> <laughs> I just so I came back from injury um, a little bit. So it's been a minute since I've been able to like huck myself down big stuff. Okay. Um, But yeah, because my ankle just like couldn't handle it for a while. But I'm starting to get there again. Like we're we're starting to th go, throw down some bigger rails and stuff, which is fun and terrifying, but uh, <laughs> mostly fun. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. I mean, like I just learned kickflip front board on a rail, so maybe one day big section. <laughs> That's a good one. And what about kickflip backside lip? It's like it's kind of off similar. Have you tried kickback lip? No, I haven't. But you know what? That would actually, because I, I do kickback 50s and sometimes they go a little awry and yeah. they go right to a kickback lip. You're yeah. onto something. You're onto something there. Keep yeah, keep tuned on the Instagram. Maybe I'll learn that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let's go for that kick flip back lip. And you know, it's, it's kind of curious because sometimes it's more easy than a backside lip slide. It's like you throw the kick flip and for any reason it's more easy. But yeah, you, you should no, try it. I I feel that for sure because a lot of like I can't back 50 that well but like I can kickflip back 50 way better than I can regular back 50. Something about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. So, do you prefer to talking about the big section? Do you prefer to skate gaps or to skate handrails if you have to skate one? Probably rails. Rails? Less is scary for you. Um, yeah, I think, I think handrails just cause like your boards under you, like, you know, like if I'm going to go for like a backboard or a front board, like I know I'm going to land on the rail versus like, if I was trying to kick flip a huge stair set, like so much could happen, like with my board, not being under my feet and stuff. I think, uh, I think, yeah. And just like rail tricks are 
pretty dope. If you can like bust out, like, I mean, I would love, I just learned front feebles, but I would love to front feeble like a big rail. It's, I just think it looks so sick. Yeah, it's a gnarly trick. I love it too. Yeah. More dumb backs, I feebles. It's more. Me too. I can't, I can't back feeble. I can only front feeble. It's super Oh, weird. and yeah, what about this Smith's? The Smith, yeah. I, you can, I can't backsmith, but I can, no, no, not yet. I can't backsmith, but I can regular smith. What? Oh my God. So what would be your tip? I always like, I get the, I stuck the word, but I can't slide. I don't know why it's, 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 it's difficult. What would be your tip for backsmith? Yeah. No, 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 I can't backsmith. I can, ah, I okay. can front smith. Okay. 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 Yeah. No, no. Backsmith is more I, yeah. That one I haven't figured out yet. Yeah. Um, tutorial. But yeah. Front smith is just like, got to be on your heel for sure <laughs> yeah for sure that's true so do you have the opportunity to travel to another country uh yeah i've gone to most like i've traveled around most of north america pretty heavily i've done some pretty cool road trips and stuff um so like the states uh, one place i really like in the states was hawaii So yeah, I've done a lot of North America, which has been really cool. I actually lived in my van for a little while and I traveled from Toronto down through Colorado to Utah, stayed in Cali for a bit and skated. And then I went up the coast to, uh, to Whistler, BC. And I lived there for the summer in like Vancouver area too, which was really dope. Um, I've been to Hawaii to skate, which was really fun. I ended up canceling my flight home because it was so sick there. I was like, I'm staying, whatever. Um, <laughs> got fired from my job, but what can you do? Um, yeah, where else? I've gone to Panama. That wasn't for skating, but, um, but yeah, I was supposed to go to, like, I haven't been to Europe yet. I really want to go to Europe. So that's supposedly maybe going to happen in May this year. Oh, we'll see if COVID settles down or not, but, um, yeah, that's somewhere I would like to go for sure to skate. And it is going to be a, a skate trip to Europe. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be an Olympic qualifier, uh, for, for that, all that jazz. <laughs> Okay, we are going to talk about the Olympics, but I wonder, what do you think about the skate communities in all the countries that you have visited? You know, you, you have come to Latin America, you have been in the States, uh, you live in Canada. Do you think that there are differences between these communities? Um, I mean, the skate community as a whole is like super rad, as we know. Yeah. And I find a lot of the time, like, wherever you go, people are just hyped on skating. Brazil was really cool. Um, I know like, I knew before going in that skateboarding was super big in Brazil, but like, I didn't really understand like to what extent, like people there thought that anybody with a skateboard that like was there at Street League was like famous. Like they thought we were all like super famous, which was cool. because I was like, whoa this is nuts but yeah and like we would like walk around in the streets with our skateboards and people would be like whoa like who is that <laughs> it's just funny like um but yeah so that was really cool like brazil was very hyped on skating and like the lineup for street league for people to get into the venue was insane like so many people wanted to come see and like that was just it was really cool to experience that like the overall hype um yeah. hawaii was really cool too because Everybody there is like, it was like different in Hawaii. Like the vibe is like people skate with no shoes on and like just rip transition and have a good time and are like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that was cool to see for sure. Other than that, I mean, the States and Canada, other than Hawaii, because like, that is part of the States, but it's pretty similar, I would say. So you are going to travel this year to um, Olympics qualifier competition. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, That's the rumor. Rumor has it. I mean, like, we really don't know what is happening with the world or like if it's gonna be able to happen. I mean, I'm I'm skating as if it's happening for sure, but I don't know 100% that any traveling is going to be going down, but hopefully, yes. Yeah, I know. The pandemic is a pretty weird deal. Weird yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> And how has been this process? Do you have chances to be in the Olympics? Um, it's hard, it's hard to say. So like last season I came off injury, um, 
I didn't have the, like, I was not skating at all the way I'm skating now. I mean, there's a chance, but I think the chance is pretty slim just with like the way the rankings are right now. And like, depending on how many contests we even get to have this year. Um, but yeah, they're, they're taking top 20. So, I mean, if I could like really, really do well at a couple of them, there's definitely a chance. So who knows, you know, crazier things have happened. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And um, uh, what do you have to do? You have to compete. You have before the before the Olympics. You have to make points on or how is that? Like in order to get to the qualifiers. Yeah, in order. Yeah, to for sure. So basically, like the way it all happened with me, I um, Canada Skateboard, which is our like governing body for skateboarding, held a contest in BC, and uh, I went and I won. And they were like, "Oh, true." Uh, you know, didn't necessarily know about me before. So then after that, they invited me to go to LA to skate the uh, the qualifier there. And after that, it was just kind of like kept rolling with it. And like, I was doing decently at some of the contests. So, so yeah, that's, uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that is how it went for sure. But I don't know, like, I think it, it changes a lot from country to country, to be honest. Okay, yeah. But you have to be in the top three of your country. Yeah. yeah. And what what other girls are in in this, like in the in the top three? Like yeah. Uh, so for street, the girls competing, we have Annie Guglia. Um, she's super rad from Montreal. Yeah. And then we have uh, Sophie Grant as well. So she's from Ontario, London, Ontario. Uh, she's down in LA right now, lucky duck. But uh, but yeah, they're uh, they're both really cool people. It's nice to get to to travel around with them for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so do you have any coach, a team manager for this process, or how how that works? Um, yeah, like I mean, we have like our I would say our like team manager is Adam Higgins. He's uh, he's a cool dude. He actually came from Snowboard Canada a little bit, so he's got really good experience with like getting athletes to contests and just like making sure everything is there and everything we have or like we need we have. Um, and then for me personally, I, I don't really like have a coach, but like there's this uh, this guy Trent Thomas I just started skating with and. Um, He like I don't I don't like to put into words that like there's a coach or like because I don't know skateboarding for me like I'm just trying to chill with it have fun you know nothing like I'm going training like no I'm just going to skate it's chill um, but yeah so Trent's a really good guy he um, we skate together a bunch and he gives me a ton of tips on like different tricks or like suggest tricks to try and he's like really really good at explaining certain things like I was trying to learn um no slide big spin and he was like it's like a no slide nollie shove that's it and like once he said that to me i was like true and like i was almost getting them so it's like certain things like i think that helps a lot sometimes to have somebody there to like give you pointers but i think that also like happens naturally with a lot of the people that you skate with like um this summer for example i skated with like a bunch of the girls in vancouver a lot and and una farrar And like, she would give me tips constantly on stuff that like I was struggling with and like, boom, within the end of the session, I had it. So like grateful for that, for sure. Like people are always, it's like the thing about the skate community is people are always just like down to help each other out. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice about the skate community. So what do you prefer? Do you prefer to skate with a coach? Do you feel maybe a pressure when you are skating with someone that is watching you the entire, in your entire session yeah i mean like i definitely prefer to just like go skate with the homies and have a good time like whether that's at a park or like preferably in the streets because it's fun you can get creative with it but i also think like for the contest situation like having trent has been really really good for me like he it's not that he ever like pushes me to do anything i don't want to do but he just like suggests things that would be a good idea So I think that's um, that's a lot different. But like the point where it ever got to like a coach forcing me to do something like that's when I'm not down anymore because it just like takes the like that's not what skateboarding is about, you know, like it takes the fun away. Yes, I agree with you. So how is a daily routine for you? More than the technique, you also work out to, or what do you have to do in order to to be to stay shape? You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
So I, I live back and forth between Whistler and Toronto. Uh, so in Whistler, I'm very lucky. I get to go to the Canadian Sport Institute there and work out with uh, a trainer named Jeremy. He's a super good dude and he like makes workout routines for me all the time. So like even just now that I'm at home and I don't have access to any workout gear, he gives me a routine to do to get ready to skate and like keep the body fit. Um, and then like stretching yoga is really important. I uh, go get treatment a lot at Knots and Joints, which is my physio sponsor. So that helps to keep the body moving for sure. Um, but yeah, just general like daily routine, get out of bed, do some stretching, go to work, go skate, come home, do some more stretching, little workout, go to bed. <laughs> Be constant and stay hungry. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure. And you were mentioning that you uh, have suffered an injury. How was that experience? How, how was that? Yeah. Oh, man. Was it skating? I, yeah, skating. So I went through the ringer for a couple years. I, uh, I did my right ankle. I tore my ATFL ligament. And then I, so that was like about eight months I was out. And then I got back into it. Things were starting to go well again. I was like kind of over the mental block of that. And then, um, I got on the CJ skate park team and I was filming for like a welcome to the team part. And like my second attempt at a kickflip down the five stair, I like just ruined, like destroyed my left ankle, like full tear ATFL, CFL. It was super bad. Um, so I did that. And then I was healed, not like fully healed, but like got to skate for a day, one day. And then um, I was at work where I like do snowboard stuff and I fell down an ice slide and fell 50 feet down like and hit the tree line. Oh my and, God. Uh, a tree branch went into my leg. <laughs> oh. I was out for like another three months. So it was like two years of injury pretty much. <laughs> okay. But right now you are, you are okay. You are healing well. I'm good. I'm like literally knocking on wood. Um, yeah, I'm I'm healed. I'm in really good shape, actually, like the best shape I've been in for a while. And I have like, you know, Canada Skateboard and that to thank because I they gave me the access to like the training facilities I needed to like get in that shape. And so it was a really good summer of like just getting the body to where it needs to be to to do the, the bigger rails and stairs and stuff for sure. That's nice. I'm glad for you. I know how it feels to have a bad injury. Oh, and talking about that, what would be your advice to struggle this process of having a, a bad injury? Yeah, um, take the time that you need to heal. I feel like a lot of people rush back into it. And then, you know, if you're not, if you're like skating with somewhat of an injury, like you're putting yourself at so much more risk to re-injure or re-injure like something else. Um, but also like try to stay positive about it. Take the time to, you know, work on your fitness or like say your ankles bust, like that means you can still be doing like good core stuff or like take the time. Like, unfortunately I let myself, like, I just was sad and like depressed. I was like, no, like, again, are you kidding me? I can't skate. This sucks. But I think if you take the time to like better yourself, um, it's, definitely better <laughs> use the time to to do good things rather than just like laze around and be sad for sure yeah thank you and, for the words yeah of course let's be patient that's true and work for that yeah we need we need to do therapy and and all of that yeah, yeah. take take what your uh, physiotherapist says seriously <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's <switches>. true <laughs> Okay, Mari, the conversation is about to end. A few last questions and that's it. Thank you for, for this conversation. Okay, so who are your influences, your references, your favorite skaters right now? Um, Alexis Sablone has been a super big influence for me. I think she's just so sick for like more than one reason. Like not only is she an extremely talented skateboarder, but like she also has so much else going on. Like she went to... Um, like university has a full degree. I think it was MIT, something like that. Like she's an architect, um, which is so cool to me. Like not only like did you make it in skating and we're like a your pro skater, but like you also like have this whole other career. Yeah. So I think that says a lot um, about somebody and just like you can do it all if you want. Um, other than that, Mariah Duran is super dope. She's just like 
always killing it, sending big stuff, which is cool. Um, and then like just my friends, honestly, like my friends get me so hyped up on skating that it's it's cool to see everybody learning tricks and like the community gets me stoked. Yeah, that's nice. And what do you think? Uh, what do you like the most when you are watching a skater? The difficulty of the tricks or the style? I know both are important, but if you have to choose, what would be your shoes, your choice? Uh, definitely, definitely style. I think that, you know, there's people out there that can do super gnarly stuff, but it, it doesn't look that sick. It's like, wow, that was like heavy, but meh. But then there's also people that like throw down and it just looks so sick. You're like, yo, that was so steep. Like, I think if you can really have like add style to a trick that that makes it so much better. I agree with you. I also, I am a style lover. And how has been 2020 for you? How has the last year been for you? What did you do? Oh. Yeah, I mean, 2020 honestly was probably one of the the best thing that ever like happened to me um like, yeah. i mean as much as like i hate to say that because it sucks and like the world right now is insane but like for me personally it gave me a lot of time to just skate and to like you know get in shape and like do some serious skating like i've never had the time before where i could just like focus on nothing but skating And like, I didn't even have to worry about skating contests. Like I just was able to skate for myself, for fun, for the better part of a year, which was, uh, which was rad. Um, I moved to Vancouver for the summer and like in Whistler for the winter. So that was really cool. Like getting to skate in van with the, the community there, like the girls and that crew are super, super sick. And it was a pleasure to get to skate with them all summer for sure. Other than that, I mean, when the like original lockdown happened here, I was able to like, I got a rail built for myself and I live in a small town. So I just kind of skated in front of my house every day. And just like, I had a rail to a ledge and just did some lines. And that was kind of like where the progression started for me. I like have progressed a lot this year It's been, uh, it's been nice to just like, I don't know, be progressing. And like, I, I'm at a level now where like, I didn't even really know I was capable of, which is, which is kind of crazy. And I have Trent to thank a lot for that for sure. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's been great. I mean, I would like the world to go back to normal and I wish that this never happened because it's causing a lot of hurt for a lot of people and a lot of struggle, which really sucks. And, you know, I'm sending my best wishes out to everybody for sure. But, uh, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been all right for me. <laughs> it was good for you. That's nice. Yeah. And also for your injury, maybe it was a, a nice time for healing your injuries. Totally, totally. It's yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to to necessarily do well at the contests if they had have happened when they were going to happen. But now it's like a bit of a different story. I might have a better chance. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And what about the plans for 2021? What are your plans for this year? besides the Olympics, because I know that you are going to kill it in, in that process. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to plan because of the state of the world. Um, but I mean, for myself personally, other than contests, I'd really like to get out more in the streets and work on a part. Um, I've been able to like learn a bunch of new tricks that I'd really like to throw down in the streets, which would be, which would be super fun. And then, uh, Yeah, other than that, just kind of keep vibing, stay happy, stay safe and healthy, hopefully. Avoid injury at all costs. <laughs> I would <laughs> love sure. to travel, but I mean, again, like I really don't know if that's going to be a possibility, but traveling definitely. Ideally, traveling and making a video part would be so sick. Okay, that would be nice. And yeah. go for that kickflip backflip. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm try to learn that one soon. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, Maddie, that was it for today. Thank you for all the words that you shared with us. Thank you for your vibes and congratulations for the achievements that you are making. And I hope that you can skate well and that you can achieve all that you have in your mind right now. All right? I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. The best vibe for you. Thanks, man. All right, we'll talk to you another time. For sure. Maybe we can skate in the future. Yeah. I don't know. Be sick. Colombia, you're from? Yeah. 
I'll let you know if I'm ever in Colombia. Okay, let me know. I'm gonna follow you on Instagram and let's chat Sounds and let's good. share vibes, skater vibes. You know how Absolutely, it is. Absolutely, man. All right, we'll catch you later. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Good vibes. So this was Medibolt. I really hope that you find inspiration in the words that she shared with us. And yeah, she really knows how to kill it in the snow and she really knows how to kill it on the asphalt. So I really hope that right now you feel inspired to go skate. In my case, that's what is happening right now. So let's stop watching this and let's go to the streets. Thank you so much for being until the end of this video. Now I invite you to like and subscribe to this channel in order to watch more content like this. You know how it is. So let's go to the streets and let's go skate safe.